if you misbehave, you'll end up under the patio, just like Heather. My name is Peter Blexley. I'm a former Scotland Yard detective. This month marks 30 years since the murderous crimes of Fred and Rose West were finally discovered. They were quite rightly called Britain's most evil couple ever. Body number 11 is brought from 25 Midland Road, Frederick West's home of the early 1970s. It was found late last night underneath the concrete kitchen floor. Fred West was 28 years old when he met 15-year-old Rose. He'd already been married to Rena and had two children. Fred and Rose later married and went on to have five children between them. But Rose had another three, all of whom were fathered by clients of hers as she worked as a prostitute. And all of this happened while her and Fred were married. The remains taken away earlier are now being examined by a pathologist. Forces across the country have been alerted to check their missing persons files as detectives refuse to rule out the possibility of finding more bodies. Fred West had already murdered his stepdaughter, Charmaine. She was the daughter of his first wife. By the time that Fred and Rose had their own first child together. It was 1980 when Barry was born. He was called Barry because the Wests used to go on holiday in Barry Island in Wales. A rather sinister naming perhaps, bearing in mind the criminality that those two got up to. Barry was taken into care by social services as a troubled teenager. Clearly all the wrongdoing of the Wests was not thoroughly examined at that stage and, perhaps not surprisingly, Barry went on to have a very troubled life. There was drugs, there was suicide attempts, and eventually he took his own life at the age of 40 in 2020. There's one question that I would like answered if possible is how come when I was 15, when I was admitted to hospital with an ectopic pregnancies, uh, why the Gloucester Hospital didn't inquire. They didn't I ask questions about who the father was and, and uh, I was underage. underage. Anne-Marie West was a child from Fred's first marriage to Rena. Fred raped her when she was only eight years old and went on to systematically abuse her. In fact, Rose, her stepmother, also encouraged others to sexually abuse her. Remarkably, long after Fred and Rose had been jailed, Anne-Marie went on to rebuild her life and she'll be 60 years old later this year. She's written a book detailing the absolute horrors that were imposed upon her. She is also a mother and a grandmother and regularly speaks out about child abuse and sexual violence. So far, I tell you, they're human, uh, they're female, and they're of a young girl. I uh, can't tell the exact age yet, that'll take some extra work. Fred and Rose's eldest child was Heather, who was born in 1970. She again had a miserable life at the hands of her parents, and eventually they murdered her and buried her body underneath the patio of their home. Sickeningly, they used Heather's murder as a threat to other children to comply with their orders, to do what they told them to do, to suffer the abuse that they laid upon them. If you misbehave, you'll end up under the patio, just like Heather. Stephen West was Fred and Rose's third child together. He was born in 1973. He's now been married and divorced twice and has a new partner. But with horrifying echoes, perhaps, of some of his father's previous offending, he was convicted 
in 2002 of having sex with an underage girl. He served nine months. At his trial, he claimed that the sex was consensual. But let me tell you something. Sex with a child can never, ever be consensual. Their next daughter was called Mae West, and she is now 51 and lives in a secret location. She's terrified of ever being exposed as a child of Fred and Rose West. She was raped by her uncle when only five years old, and as a child, forced to watch hardcore porn by her father. She's written a book called Love as always, Mum. And I sincerely hope that she is allowed to live her life anonymously, safely and happily. No one's in any doubt that long shadows have been cast over Gloucester by the Rosemary West trial and the murders at Cromwell Street. Tara West was the next daughter to be born to Rose, but Fred wasn't her father. Tara was fathered by a client when Rose was working as a prostitute. And after her mum had been sentenced, she wrote to her regularly and would visit her in prison. She's had contacts with her other siblings, including Stephen. But perhaps not surprisingly, she struggled to make relationships work. Now 46, Tara was last known to be living in a quiet town in the north of England. Louise West was the last child that Fred and Rose had together. She was born in 1978. And for me, is the real hero of the hour. When she told a friend at school about all the horrendous abuse that was going on at home, that's what started the police investigation. That's what led to the discovery of the bodies. That's what exposed the murderous lives of Rose and Fred West. Rosemary Junior and Luciana were the two last children of Rose West. They weren't fathered by Fred, but just like Tara before them, they were fathered by another client, possibly the same man that fathered Tara. So three daughters born of Rose, not through Fred, but through her work as a prostitute. Fred West's suicide left many other questions unanswered. Peter Bastholm remains convinced that his sister Mary was another victim. Rose, of course, is still in prison. Convicted of 10 murders, she shall never taste freedom, which is absolutely right. Fred, of course, rather disappointingly, was allowed to take his own life when he was on remand. In other words, while he was awaiting trial. He'd confessed to no less than 30 murders. And for me, it is a source of huge irritation that he was able to take his own life and consequently evade justice. A chapter has closed. 25 Cromwell Street is sealed. But for all those touched by such appalling crimes, memories can never be so easily locked away.